Thanks for staying with us at STL Live. The Repertory Theater of St. Louis is currently featuring the phenomenal play Angels in America, which takes a look at two different couples facing life's challenges. My guests today are Hannah Sharif, the artistic director, the very brand new artistic director of the Repertory Theater of St. Louis, and the extraordinary Meredith Baxter, actress from the play Angels in America. Welcome both Hannah and Meredith. Thank, Thank you. you. We Thank are you thrilled. Whoa, what a treat for us. So let's just go ahead and get into the repertory and how we are so fortunate to have you both here today. So we know a little bit of history about the Repertory Theater, but you're brand new, June, in yes. fact. So yes. welcome to St. Louis. Thank you. How's it going so far? It's been an incredibly warm welcome. Yeah. I mean, I could not have asked for a better onboarding to yeah. this city. I was also one of the lucky ones um, yeah. in that I had a year of transition to work directly with Steve Wolf, who so admirably served That's the awesome. Rep for 34 years. Um, so as I was building the season and dreaming about what the first plays would be that would launch my inaugural season, how I could introduce myself as an artist, uh, I had a wonderful team of people to work with on that. Yeah. One of the things I thought was that we wanted to launch the season in an epic way. We Absolutely. wanted to do a show that was revolutionary, a show that was reflective of the artistic aesthetic that I have and the values that I have and uh, to attract the best artists in the country to be able to perform it. And so Angels in America, parts one and two, Millennium Approaches and Perestroika, Tony Kushner's masterworks yes. of art um, felt like just the right entry uh, to this community. Absolutely. And a little known fact is actually that Tony Kushner was on an NEA Director's Fellowship in St. Louis mm -hmm. in the oh, 80s when he got a call saying, that one of his dear friends from college had passed away mm -hmm. from AIDS. And that night, staying in the apartments that our actors are currently really? living in. <laughs> Maybe mine. <laughs> he had a dream yeah. and of an angel crashing through a ceiling. And when he woke up the next day, he said he wrote this epic poem, this mm -hmm. you know 30 plus page epic poem called Angels in America. And over the next few years, that would become these iconic works that revolutionized the American theater. So when I was thinking about what show should be the first show yeah. to produce yeah. uh, in this inaugural mm. season, I thought we should tell this story that changed the American theater, that changed my life, and that has roots in St. Louis. And then it was about building an artistic team that would be incomparable. Right. And I have to say, this artistic team oh, is extraordinary. It, it, yes. That's the word. Well, that's to hear word. you say that, because you've been a part of many of our lives and just a thrill to have you with us today for years and bringing forth great performances. To have you live is an incredible live treat. Live is the for, best way. Is that what you like the most? Um, yes, I okay. think so. And you know, th there's something extraordinary happens in theater when people are sitting and viewing a show together, are yeah. having a common experience of a performances that, that takes you on a journey. Um, there's there's background uh, backup for this that they did tests to see they put wires on uh, members of the audience mm -hmm. and their heart rates wow. and their pulses mm -hmm. tended to regulate and they were in rhythm yeah. with each other mm -hmm. and so even when they got up and walked out of the theater there's that connection mm -hmm. and because of that shared experience it's yeah. it's extraordinary Absolutely. and to see that with, with angels in america is it's it's an eye opener Absolutely. we all kind of sync up on a similar wavelength and i think that's a tremendous advantage we have for live theater but the repertory has a, a, a long legacy of excellence yes. and so you definitely fit that bill what attracted you to work with this play in particular i hear it's extremely ah. challenging <laughs> you're playing how many roles is that, um, Meredith? Five. <laughs> five different roles mm -hmm. in an extremely challenging play with parts one and two that yes. are three it's plus fun. hours each. Yes. That's right. You are such an underachiever. Okay, I want to rethink this now. It's too late. You've been under contract. Oh, <laughs> I should have said, don't look down. Oh, my goodness. Um, what really was the... You know, I've, for some reason, and this is, uh, I'm sure... Um, some sociopathy <laughs> attached to this. I am attracted to things that scare me, wow. and uh, this really mm. frightened me. Also, I didn't quite understand. Um, I, I said, <laughs> yes, of course, Hannah, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> and the deal was done, and I was reading the play, and 
I had neglected to go. You probably know this part of the uh, in the in the. Um, in the book, the play that it doesn't say, uh, it has a list of all the characters, mm -hmm. right. then it has another list of characters and says, oh, this one's played by that character prior, this one's played by so you Hannah. you had no idea. I said, well, wh what? That's all you. <laughs> that had what? to be an incredible part of this. We're going to come back and learn more about the play and more about how you overcame that hurdle in just a moment. So stay with us at STL Live. We'll have more from Hannah Sharif and Meredith Baxter after this break.